Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury on an Emirates 777. I'm just talking watches and uh, drinking coffee. Talking watches and drinking coffee. In business class on Emirates. Hi guys, Paul Pluto on the Paul Pluto channel. Today guys, I'm doing a paid review. Paid review, AU41. Let's do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing a Patek Philippe Grand Classic. This is the 5127. This is my beautiful Calatrava of choice with a deployant buckle. Absolutely love it. Why do I put my hand like that there? It's so you guys can see the time that I'm making this video. Okay, AU41. This is from Shane. Hi, Archie. As a practic practicing doctor, I often have charts that are transported to and from work. Often when working at home, I bring my iPad with me and other various items. I have sadly in the past used soft-sided satchels. My father was a doctor as well. I always remembered him having hard case briefcases for his paperwork. I'm looking to purchase a Louis Vuitton hard case briefcase. Would you recommend one for daily use? And the best way to get a deal on a, on one used. Lastly, I was wondering <clears throat> if you could recommend a pen to go with my briefcase as a permanent compliment. I would like to turn up at meetings with my Cartier Optic Santos with a nice briefcase and pen. Thank you. Uh, P.S. Rusty Leisure has nothing on you. Maybe say that in the vid. Rust, Rusty Leisure has nothing on you. Okay, so let's talk about this. <clears throat> okay, I love briefcases. And I've got to tell you, before we start this review, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. And it's, it's a rather sad story, and it's the nasty left-wing feminist movement. See, what happened is men, men had briefcases, hard-quality briefcases. They were like a mini safe. See, because you had a lock on them, you could put shit in there. And what happened? Well, the feminist, lesbian, and gay movement decided that wasn't going to be acceptable. We don't want our men folk having secrets from the rest of us. And see, I got to be honest with you. When you had a hard sided briefcase, let me just turn this camera here. Let's just turn that there. Turn that. I want to show you. When you had a hard-sided briefcase, you could very... Oops, that's a, bit, that's a bit off, that one. You could very easily put your magazines in them. This is Black Label Penthouse. And you see, you, you, could, you, could, you could have them with you, right? You could take your magazines because you had a safe... Secure place so no nasty left-wing feminist bitches was going to find them. So then the feminist movement decided to commit the ultimate sin by making the hard-sided breeze case obsolete. And you fuckwit alpha males, you bought it hook, line and sinker. You bought it hook, line and sinker. So that's why we no longer have hard-sided Okay, with Louis Vuitton, <clears throat> we've got a few options there. We have the Louis Vuitton President Classier. That is the traditional briefcase. I have one of these myself. It's got my initials HPP on it. Horatio Paul Pluter. Uh, I've got that painted on there. That's a great briefcase. Uh, Hard-sided. It's quite stores a lot of things you could put a laptop in there you could have all sorts of things in there my brief my president is actually in for repair i one of my panels when i was assaulted in melbourne many years ago i threw it into someone's mouth and it got a ding so i'm getting that ding removed it was on the side edging so the President Classier is a great briefcase, but I'd also like to show you what they call a diplomat. This is a diplomat. Now, I call this nickname, it's the Dippy. It's my Dippy. 
And these were, Louis Vuitton gave every bag they have a name. So, you know, I love the names. They had the Ambassador. They had the, the Serviette Fermor. That's the Führer, the Führer, Servant Führer. You had the President Classier. Then they had the President Grande. Um, and then the Diplomat. You know, so it's quite funny how they, they name these things here. So this here is my Louis Vuitton Diplomat. I absolutely love it. The Diplomat traditionally was in the tiger leather, which I love. Now, these were one square inch smaller than the actual President Classy Er. See, this is what they were. So they were one inch, one square inch smaller. Now, the Diplomat itself doesn't have the side edging. Now, the side edging is actually quite good because it stops the briefcase wearing, but it's not the end of the world. So, this briefcase here, this here, is in really nice condition, and I've actually had this briefcase restored <clears throat> because they haven't been in production for at least 10 years now. So let's have a look inside. We'll open this one up. And this is my briefcase here. It's absolutely beautiful. I've got a few ties in here. Uh, it, it's, it's, I, I absolutely adore this briefcase. I've got my police. This was when I was going to trial. My police court papers there. That's when the CCC were after me. I still got a copy of my, my police my brief of evidence, court brief. That's, I keep a copy there to keep me on the level head. It's got locks and everything here. So these are really cool buying. I, I think they are absolutely lovely. And I would have no problem having one of these. I think the Diplomat may be a little bit better in size because it's one square inch smaller. I'd highly recommend the Diplomat. It also has this filing system at the back here, which is rather useful. It's very, very useful. Now, the problem is, the one shortcoming on these Diplomat is, a lot of the interiors have gone sticky. For some reason, the humidity in that there in certain climates, like Australia, uh, Asia, Japan, has made the backing go horribly sticky. And that horrible sticky stuff, believe you me, it's um, it's fucking awful because it doesn't wash off in water and it fucking goes everywhere. So if a briefcase has started to get that sticky, sticky black interior, sticky Louis Vuitton poo, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world, but it's a real bitch. So my advice to you is this. Louis Vuitton will actually replace that interior problem quite quite fairly they will they will do it quite fairly indeed i have had it done by louis vuitton and i've got to say the, the fee was was reasonable i i didn't think it was ridiculous to have the entire interior where it's gone sticky fixed i just gotta find it I keep all these receipts here, just like to has, have a... So that cost me to do the interior, da 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 grand sum of 318 Aussie dollars. That's about 250 US dollars. So it's, it's, it's not terrible. The beautiful thing with this hard-sided, the reason it's called hard-sided briefcase, is because it actually, it's actually made of wood. You've got a wooden frame. The reason these are so expensive is because the wood takes about 10 years to age. So my advice to you would be, one, a Louis Vuitton President Classier. You can get that in Most Famous in the monogram with the Louis Vuitton logos on. Uh, you can also get it in Damia. Sorry, you can also get it in Damia. You can also get it in, in leather. There's Epi leather and also Tiger leather. The next thing is is the Diplomat, which I think is a nicer size. It's, it's a bit smaller, and I think a really nice size. Again, 
you can get these on eBay uh, and you can actually um, now the thing is if you get one in most cases there you're going to have to you're going to have to do a little bit of work <laughs> you can get them cheap on eBay you want to buy the best outside condition you can get the interior you want to get Louis Vuitton to do that okay so that's that's honestly um, what needs to be done now I've got to tell you in all honesty there Louis Vuitton is very reasonable to do and um, that's that's not a bad bad way to go um, look I this green one here which has just been all fully done if I was to sell it I'd want about I would want about two and a half thousand US dollars for it that's how much I want for it if if, if I was to sell it um, it's up to you which, which whether you wanted to pay that or not but that's kind of what I would um, for one that's had all the work done via Louis Vuitton with the receipts the the Louis Vuitton dust cover that's the sort of money uh, two and a half US the President Classier, when they're in monogram, that's cheaper than the leather. Uh, you're probably looking about two and a half to three and a half US dollars there, depending on what fabric it is there, whether it's the canvas or the leather. As far as they go, I can't recommend them enough. I think they are fantastic. They're a fashion statement. They're beautiful. They're a quality, well-made thing. My advice is to use it and to don't worry about the wear, just use it and enjoy it. You know, just just becomes part of you. I mean, I've got one I've used basically every trip I've gone overseas. I take it with me. There's nothing like going into business class cabin with Louis Vuitton luggage and, you know, the um, especially I bought it second hand on eBay. And I got my business class ticket on points from my friend because I couldn't afford that shit. So I got to tell you, I think they are, <clears throat> I think they're excellent buying. So, so as a price guide, what would I pay? Look, brand new, you can go. <clears throat> I mean, let's face it, let's be honest here. You're a doctor, you earn big money, okay? Um, <clears throat> you may be able to wrangle it. I don't know if it's a tax deduction because it's the luxury good, but fuck it, you earn big money. Just bill some other poor bastard, okay? Just add, tack a bit onto your, your bill. That's all you do. <coughs> I think they're worth it. <clears throat> Second hand wise, okay? You want to see the new price? Go to lv.com. You can see the prices. They don't have the diplomat anymore. They have the Louis Vuitton President Classier. That's a hard sided briefcase. Uh, <clears throat> Second hand wise, I think for a. You can get poor examples very cheap. I've seen them as low as a thousand US dollars, okay? Okay, I've seen them very cheap. Depends what's wrong with them. Um, <clears throat> generally speaking, they're, they're a pretty good bargain. Presidents, as I said there, you're going to be paying two and a half to three and a half thousand US dollars for the diplomat. As I said, one that's fully done. Um, without the work done, but really nice, two thousand US maybe a bit cheaper with all the work done I would expect I, I wouldn't sell this for less than two and a half thousand I bought this one here with the green I always wanted the green tiger I remember reading classic car magazine in the late 80s and I wanted a tiger green I remember I went to the Louis Vuitton store in Brisbane this was when it was in Elizabeth Street next to Pizza Hut behind the Maya Center if any Brisbaneites are watching that they'll, they'll know and I remember I went there in 19 it must be 96 or 97 and the price at the time this is well, this is over 20 years ago was four thousand four hundred dollars and I thought fuck that's expensive fuck fuck yes that's exactly what I thought I thought fuck that's dear mm. Mm. very very expensive so um, uh, now they, they, they kind of look that they're, they're a good buy secondhand because fashions have changed. The feminist Nazi bitches have come in and 
fucked it all up for the world and they're not going to let you have fucking stick magazines in your briefcase anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. Fuck off. Uh, but I, I reckon they're a beautiful thing to have. Love and enjoy it and wear it and just fucking, fucking, it's just quality. There's so little quality handcrafted things these days. I, I love them. I mean, there's so little. Everything's fucking made in China. These are made the traditional way. <coughs> now, getting into fountain pens. Fountain pens indeed there. I love a fountain pen. I love fountain pens. I've actually got a few pens. Let me show you what what am I carrying at the moment. So at the moment, where's my other one gone here? Here we go. So I, I've got a few. So I've got older fountain pens, okay, because I'm, uh, I like quality, okay? So let me show you. So firstly, this is my, my Burgundy Mont Blanc. That's not a fountain pen. That's a roller ball. I found Mont Blanc fountain pens, the quality. Wasn't that impressed? Very plasticky. Okay, they call it resin, but they the, the nibs are okay, but they're not the greatest. One of the most beautiful fountain pens of all time. This is top of the line Parker. It's called the Parker Duo Fold. This is actually the Greenwich edition. It came out just before it came out 1999 to celebrate the new millennium. 18 karat gold nib there, white gold and yellow gold then it just writes so beautifully. That's probably one of the nicest writing pens I've ever had. I had a really fancy Montegrappa, Monty. Monty, you might remember Monty. Foolishly, I sold Monty. Uh, I missed that fountain pen. I've been trying to buy one back. Fucking awful to write with, but I, I do miss Monty. I do miss Monty. The other fountain pen I've got, this is an older Cartier. And you might say, oh, it doesn't look anything great, but this is solid metal. It's not lacquered. A lot of the more modern Cartier fountain pens, they call it resin. It's just fucking plastic. But this is actually metal, uh, solid gold, 18 karat gold nib, beautifully gold plated trim, beautifully done. Um, it's called a must. It's got the three bands of gold, white gold, rose gold, yellow gold, three bands, the Russian wedding ring sort of tradition there <clears throat> um I, I i love that i must say i was really impressed cartier's released a new series of santos i noticed you mentioned santos optics uh santos glasses which i had a pair of santos sunglasses beautiful sold it to marky the punter the marky the super punter um i gotta tell you um they've got a really nice Pen. I saw this at a music store in Singapore because my dad's into violins. There was a music store that had some violin books. I went there. Yeah, that's what what happened. Um, I got to tell you, the guy there had this beautiful new Santos. It was really big and chunky. It wasn't a fountain pen. It was a rollerball. But I'm sure Cartier would have that <clears throat> as available as a as a fountain pen as well so um i i i prefer the older ones i prefer the older uh so i would be looking on ebay absolute bargains don't always get the cheapest don't the cheapest <clears throat> i mean i am a bargain shopper but you've got to understand the reason something is cheap is often because it's well used and fucked whereas um so sometimes better to pay more than to pay less but Definitely, definitely. I love my fountain pens and I've got a I've got a special pouch. That's my fountain pen pouch for two fountain pens and I, I travel with one pen on me. That way there I can keep them safe. So I'd highly recommend a pouch as well. Very, very important to because you don't want the fountain pen leaking, okay? You don't want it to leak. So definitely Louis Vuitton. I hope that answers your question. Um, if you want me to look around for you, um, I, I'm more than, than happy to do that as well. I'm happy to do that as well for you. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you sent me a fair bit of money, so yeah, I'll do that for you. Otherwise, I'd ask for a bit more, but I can have a look around for you. Nothing wrong with buying it at Japan. The Japanese, they love the Louis Vuitton. Often the interiors need doing. 
which they don't like to do. They're a little bit, they don't want to go in and get things repaired. They'd rather sell it cheap. So <clears throat> you've got to be prepared to get things serviced, which is fine, not a problem at all. So that is my advice. I hope it helps. I'm Paul Pluter. This is the Paul Pluter channel. Uh, guys, tell me what you think. Like, subscribe, tell your fuckwit friends, and don't be afraid to get a paid review done. Remember, paid reviews keep me in the seats. They keep me here. Without these paid reviews, I'd really be very, very hard. It'd be hard for me to keep producing quality content. So until next time, fuckers. Until next time. Ciao, fucker Roonies. Like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends. Put some nasty comments below. And if you haven't done a paid review, now would be really good. Who does Archie Luxury recommend is the greatest grey market dealer in America? There's only one choice, David SW. That's right, guys. I've got to tell you the honest truth. I have, for a long time, been looking for the perfect answer. Who do I recommend people go to see? Who do I recommend that people can go and uh, buy watches? And I've got to be honest with you, the greatest, the greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, is David SW. David SW. David SW. David SW dot com. That's right, guys. I have been looking for a contact who I can very nicely refer people too. I am not in the selling business. Customer service. I'm too old to sell watches. I'm too old. I like to recommend my viewers to a reliable source. In Australia, I've got some great sources. There's uh, Sydney Watch Exchange with Cove. Ronnie at Vintage Watch Co. Shani. Shani at European Watch Gallery. And in America, who is the best source for pre-owned Rolex, for all the hot models, there's only one person I would recommend, David S.W. David S.W., David S.W. 
That is the premier source for pre-owned Rolex. I gotta be completely frank and honest with you. Guys, if you are looking for a hot Rolex model, there is only one place you can go to. David SW, David SW, David SW. Let's be honest, guys. There's no point schmoozing, schmoozing, schmoozing the dealers, the ADs. They're just a waste of time. Unless you're going to buy 20 pieces, you are wasting your time. What you're better off to do is pay the market premium and go to a good, good pre-owned dealer. Who do I recommend? David SW. David SW. David SW. That's correct, guys. I want to tell you this now. I 100% stand behind David SW. David SW, the greatest pre-owned dealer in the entire United States of America. That's right. The greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, for Patek Philippe, for Audemars Piguet, David SW. He even does things like FP Jean. David SW, David SW, David SW. That's right. If you want to buy a pre-owned Rolex, a Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, there's only one Good source, I would recommend David SW, David SW, David SW. I'm Paul Pluto, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III, and I'm proud to recommend David SW. See you later. Thank you for watching this channel. <laughs>luxury fan. <laughs> I still love Archie Luxury Channel because Archie is so cool and funny. <laughs> I also think Archie is rather cute if you like overweight, middle age, lower middle class, white guy with four children. <laughs> and you know, I'm so proud that Archie Luxury has over 5 million YouTube views. Okay guys, jokes aside, I really love Archie Luxury character and I'm so proud to promote this channel. Thank you Archie for making me laugh and smile every day of my life. Thank you Archie and oh, fuck you Volkswagen. <laughs>